Hi, I'm Sandra Rogers. I'm a developer experience engineer who loves building things with Vue, and I'm excited to be teaching this course on Pina Fundamentals. In this course, we'll be diving into how to use Pina, Vue's official state management library. We'll learn what Pina is, how to set it up, and we'll build a simple to-do list application so we can practice using it. But first, let's get a clear mental model for how Pina works. To start, what is Pina for? Pina is used to help with managing state. What do I mean by state? In an application, some things you see on the screen don't change, but other things have to change based on certain situations. For example, if a user is not logged in, we might show them a button that says log in. But if they are already logged in, we might hide that button. The rendered button all depends on the state of a user being logged in or not. Now that we have an idea of what state is, the question becomes, how do we manage state across a view app full of components? Technically, we could store local state on each component within a data property or reactive ref. But what do we do when one component needs to communicate something about its state to a component in a completely different part of the component tree? Your components will need to share state and communicate state changes to and from each other. Theoretically, we could emit events upwards and then use props to pass that state back down. But I'm sure you can see how this can quickly get messy, hard to maintain, and even harder to debug. So instead, wouldn't it be convenient if there were a global state, some single source of truth for the state of things across your application? And what if this global state was accessible to every component in your app, regardless of how deeply nested they might be? And wouldn't it be better if that state were reactive? So when state changes occur, anywhere in your app that is relying on that state will automatically update? Well, I've got good news. This is exactly what Pina provides for us. Now we'll look at an example store so we can begin to have a clear mental model for how Pina works. A store is the structural pattern of state management that Pina provides. Let's compare it to the structure of a view component. Keep in mind that a view component is dealing with local state and the Pina store is managing global state. But the structure we set up in each is similar. We can build our mental model around that structure. A view component stores local data in its data property, if we're using the options API, and in a ref, if we're using the script setup API. And the Pina store keeps its data in the state property. A view component has methods that can update the component's data, i.e. local state. Pina has actions which can update the state in our store. And finally, while a component can use computed properties to return a processed version of data without affecting the original data itself, Pina has getters, which can use the Pina state to return a processed version of that state. Now that we're getting a clearer sense for how Pina works, let's look at a simple example to see it all in motion. Here's a store from a to-do list app. This store tracks the state of the to-dos and it includes an action to add them to the to-dos array and a getter for returning to-dos which are done. Using this demo to-do store as an example, how might this look in motion? As you can see from the component, we call the add to-do action, which adds the to-do into our state. And if we want to get only the to-dos that are done, we could use our done to-dos getter to retrieve them. Hopefully with that, you're getting a clear idea of how Pina works. Another reason it's so great is that it's modular by design. With Pina, you can have multiple stores separated by logical concern and directly import a store into the components that need them. This helps with lazy loading because the bundler can now code split by associating the different modules with the different pages in which they're being used. This also gives Pina great TypeScript inference. Now that we're clear on how Pina works and we've seen a demo of an action, we're ready to dive into the core concepts and start building a to-do list application throughout the rest of this course. Since this to-do list app will have two sibling components that need to update based on state changes, it makes a good use case for incorporating the Pina library, even though it's a simple example. 
Let's take a look at what we'll be building. Our application will be made up of a form with an input where the user can enter items to add to the to-do list. And it will present those items in a list with a checkbox and an X so the user can mark them complete or delete them from the list. The form and the list are the two sibling components I referred to. They both need access to the same global state and Pina will help to provide that. We'll learn how to define a store that will hold the state data for the to-do list, containing all the items that have been added and whether each item has been completed or not completed. And we'll write actions to add items to the list, toggle the items complete or not complete, and even delete the items. Along the way, I'll give you some extra information that will be useful to you as you're learning to use Pina in your own projects. Now let's start building the to-do list application and learn the fundamentals of Pina. See you in the next lesson. In this lesson, we're going to create our project for our to-do app and we'll create our first Pina store. Let's get started. We'll use the create view CLI to scaffold our new view project. We'll type the command npm init view at three and name the project to do app. We'll select which plugins and presets to include in the project, including Pina. This way we'll start our project with the Pina plugin already installed and we'll have an example store and some boilerplate to work with. Now let's CD into the project folder. Opening up the project in VS Code, we can confirm that Pina is a dependency in our package.json. Inside main.js, we can see that the app is already importing create Pina and telling our app to use it. Notice we have this stores folder with a demo counter store. This provides us with some boilerplate we could use to help us create a store. Now we'll just delete out some of this boilerplate code, including these icons and components. Then we'll create the three components that will make up our to-do list app. To-do app, the parent component, and its child components, to do form and to do list. If we align these three component files next to each other, we can quickly scaffold them out. Note here that we're using the script setup API, which is a compile time syntactic sugar for the composition API, allowing us to write less boilerplate code. Script setup gives us access to things like variables and methods from within the template so we don't have to return them inside of a setup method like we would with the normal composition API. Here's how these components will eventually look when rendered in the browser. We have the parent to-do app, and nested within that we have the to-do form where we can add an item to the list. And we have the to-do list where the items are displayed. Now we can start fleshing out our to-do app component, giving it a class and heading. Also nesting the to-do form, and to-do list components inside of here, which we'll need to import above in the script section. Now heading into app.view, we can import our to-do app component. Then delete out all this boilerplate code and nest our to-do app here. We'll also delete out all the CSS that came with the demo app. Now that our app is starting to come together, we can build out our Pina store. So we'll delete out the demo store and create our own store called to-do list. We'll first import the define store function from Pina and then export a const called use to-do list store. Inside that const, we'll define our store, giving it a name and an object of options such as state, getters, and actions. I'd like to bring your attention to this naming convention we are using in this const, use to-do list store. This naming convention makes sense because whenever we import and use this store inside a component, we'll import it as use to-do list store. Now we'll start creating a global state object and give it a to-do list array, which will eventually contain an object for each to-do item. We're making great progress. We set up our project and we created our first Pina store. Now we're gonna learn about mutating state with actions. And with that, I'll see you in the next lesson.